How does someone know which story they should write? You should write the one you're afraid to tell. If, you're, if it scares you, then you, you know you need to do it. I have a couple like that right now that I'm working on. Um, I have a play that is going to be going up off Broadway next year. Um, it was it was actually one of the very first pieces of writing I'd ever done. I was in a group called the Los Angeles Writers Center for years when I was kind of dipping my toe into to writing and decided I wasn't very good at it. But I had written a play. Um, it's a two act play, um, and it, I wrote it in two thousand and seven. And it's actually scary how how applicable it is to today's current climate. Um, it's about a Mexican American soldier who's injured in Iraq and his illegal brother is killed while they're serving over there. So this was right after 9-11. And he comes back to Los Angeles and he discovers that his two younger siblings have been put into foster care and his parents have deport been deported. And I wrote this in 2007. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and it was, it was, it's called Borderline. Um, and it, it was actually a uh, semifinalist at AFF last year. Again, as soon as, as soon as I started to build up my own confidence in my writing, I, I took off some stuff and I, I dusted them off and I started to submit them out. And I have a friend of mine who I went to USC with um, who runs a theater um, up in Manhattan. And this is a issue that is, that she's very passionate about. And I'd never connected the dots before, but I sent it to her and she said, do you want to, I said, do you want to read this? And she said, yeah, absolutely. So she read it and she goes, why don't we do a reading? So we did a reading in April this year in New York and we have decided to workshop it um, with the intent of, of putting it up in the fall of 2020. Now I have not done any of the rewrites yet because I am silently criticizing myself because how do I take the enormity of everything that's going on right now and put it into a two-act play. And again, you know, why am I the person to tell this story? And this is something that I wrestled with. Um, and I, I hope it comes out well. I hope I tell an authentic story. And, and I hope I create something that really resonates and moves people. But my job as a writer is to really take myself, in this particular instance, is to take myself out of it and to put my fears beside, you know, behind me so I can, so I can draft this piece. Um, we need writers right now more than ever because um, a lot of people's voices are being quieted and this is not the time. Does it scare you? Of course it scares me. <laughs> of course it to scares me. To tell that me. story? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why does it scare you to tell that story? Um, you know, I certainly don't want anything to ring inauthentic or hollow. Um, and of course, you know, if I'm if I'm telling a story that doesn't necessarily relate to you know my own upbringing, you know, m my family is not immigrants. I mean, they're they are from Italy, but that was you know two two generations ago, so I wasn't directly impacted by that growing up. But there are a lot of people that are hurting right now. There are a lot of people that are struggling. Um, so for me to have to, you know, that's a lot of weight to carry on my shoulders. But I. Put that weight upon myself because I feel like this is a very important story to tell and it's one that I want to tell. Um, so I'm doing a lot of research right now. I'm speaking with immigration attorneys. I am reading you know, news articles. I'm doing a ton of research. Um, it's, it's my job to tell the story the best that I can. I mean, I'm crafting the story as well. Um, but I find you know, this, this other piece that, that I've worked on, Daruma, um, this, this particular story, it, it stars two disabled leads, but the movie is not about their disability. And I, I wrote this as a way to deal with my own grief after a member of my family became uh, paralyzed in an accident. Now, the story is not about them. It's, it's not about them at all, but it's inspired by them. And I went through dozens of drafts of that script because I wanted to tell an authentic story. Now, I'm, I'm not a disabled person. I, the last thing I wanted to do was to put anything on the page that was, you know, inauthentic, offensive. I, I put that script through so many sensitivity reads, which is, a, which is an important thing to do as a writer. Um, and that's not to say shy away from telling, you know, racy material or things, you know, that, that are taboo. Definitely tell those stories. But it's important in this level of heightened awareness to, to put your things through a sensitivity read. And I changed things about that script. I, 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 I took things out. You know, one thing that I, I kicked myself for, um, our, one of our leads, John, um, in the script, his, his character is called is Robert. 
But Robert is a double arm amputee. And I wrote Robert how I thought a double arm amputee would be. A very limited action, very limited movement. And then we cast John Lawson. And my God, that guy, he is a private pilot. He can scuba dive. He's an amazing photographer. As a writer, when I initially did, I, I limited him. And it took me meeting John and interacting and really ingratiating myself with that community to open myself up. And that's how you tell an authentic story. So. What is a sensitivity read? So a sensitivity read is to put your material in front of you know, a person that you are writing about. So let's just say that you're writing about uh, a disabled person, or maybe you're writing about somebody who has HIV, or maybe you're writing about an immigrant. Maybe you're writing about somebody with topical issues, you know, any, anything that can be considered uh, emotionally or politically charged. So uh, dealing with issues of, of race, color, economic class, anything that can be uh, pos possibly disparaging to a particular group of people. It's important that you share those materials. You, you, you put it in front of you know, readers and you know, do a table read. You know, do, do, uh, have actors read the parts back to you. And you know, there was, in my play, Borderline, um, one of the feedback, uh, one of the pieces of feedback that I'm working into, I have sort of a, a Greek chorus of Dia de los Muertos characters. And of course, that's, you know, that's something that's very uh, traditionally you know, Mexican. Um, they're, uh, in, in my story, they function as a Greek chorus, and they're kind of ominous figures. But I had a Latino cast, and you know, two out of three of them were like, you really need to be a little bit more positive with these guys, because you know, the Dia de los Muertos is a way to honor family and tradition, and these guys kind of come across as, as baddies. And I'm like, okay, I didn't know that. So as a writer, you need to be open to hearing those kinds of suggestions. Because, you know, every, everybody knows the stories, you know, of cowboys and Indians, you know. What a, what a classically machismo, you know, imperialistic way of thinking. And nobody would make that movie these days. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it wouldn't happen. You know, you go back and you look at a lot of movies from your childhood or the 90s or you know, a lot of these raunchy comedies. They're creepy. You know, if you, you look at a lot of... Um, movies now, like especially in the 80s, like that's rape culture. And that perpetuates things. You know, people consume the media that you write. Um, it's, it's important to have people look at your materials to make sure it, it kind of passes a smell test. Now, that's, that's, a, that's a sensitivity read. Interesting. And what about the criticism that somebody who hasn't been through something shouldn't be allowed to tell it. I feel like in this climate, because somebody's voice may be censored or they may be afraid to tell that story, that somebody else who may feel like, I don't know, society might view them as they have more freedoms to tell a story, yeah. should be able to then get that story out there. I have two, two things to say about that. Um, the director of my play, the stage reading that we did, she's, she's uh, Latinx. Uh, amazing young auteur. Uh, we had a conversation, you know, we were getting ready for pre-production and she asked me, she said, are you, are you viewed as Hispanic descent? And I said, no, I'm not. She goes, well, your Spanish is pretty good. And I was like, well, I worked with the translator to, to get that going. And um, she asked me, she goes, why are you the one to tell the story? She's like, you know, you're a white woman. Why are you the one to, to tell this story? And my answer was that no one else is telling it. No one else is telling the story. And you know, regardless of my background or my skin color or, or anything, I live in this world and these are issues that I care about. So if I care about them enough to try to talk about them and to try to push them out into the world, you know, my, my story may not be the end all be all, you know, you know, end of the subject matter. It's, that's not gonna be the case. But this is something that I care deeply about. And I, you know, I live in this world, I'm impacted by these issues too. So that's, that's one way that I, I address those particular questions. Um, I had a general a couple weeks ago with another production company, a very well-known uh, film company. And, you know, as a writer, you're always constantly going through, I mean, at least I am personally, you know, self-doubt and kind of self-loathing and thinking that you suck. 
Um, but she was talking about a lot of the pieces that I write and she noticed a common thread, the development exec that I was sitting with. She was like, you tend to really give characters that don't have a voice, a voice. And I, I started to look back at the pieces that I would write at, or that, I, that I'd been working on. And, you know, when you look at Borderline that deals with the immigration issues and Daruma, which deals with disability. And I have another one where the lead is a little deaf girl. Um, and then you deal with domestic violence issues in, in Baltimore. And I didn't really realize that. And I mean, even though, you know, I didn't necessarily have the, the best upbringing and I've certainly struggled. I am, she, she said it very eloquently. She goes, you're using your privilege to give voice to those who, who don't have a voice. So that's something, I actually walked out of the office a little teary, <laughs> um, but that really rang true to me.